little bags. Don't we all like little bags? I certainly do. I have a lot of them and all different shapes and sizes. But today I we're looking at Little Zippy, which is a little pouch bag, which I use all sorts of things. I put my styluses in for Sashiko. I put pencils in them, uh, all sorts of things. And I usually know where things are. But I suppose if you had too many, it could be a problem. But as far as I'm concerned, you cannot have too many bags. Okay, let's clear the deck. Um, this is the pattern that we were working from. And this pattern is available in my shop as a digital download, or you can buy it as a kit as well with everything I'm going to show you to make one bag. Okay. First of all, you will need three pieces of fabric, well, two pieces of fabric, I should say, and a piece of wadding that goes in the middle. Uh, so we've got the front, your back, and your wadding. And they're approximately 6 by 10 inches. And this wadding is iron-on wadding. So you can probably see it's a little bit shiny. And that will be ironed on to the front fabric, not the lining. Okay, the front fabric. And the, the wadding I use is a, like a felted wadding. So it's very, very stable. It doesn't sort of tend to stretch out of shape very much. But you could use scrap um, uh, wadding from your quilting or use pellon or two layers of pellon. Uh, anything to give this a bit of construction or a bit of strength, a bit of integrity, a bit of strength. Okay. You will also need your pattern. So in your actual booklet of your pattern here, you have a pattern to trace out the shape. Now, this is your basic shape. It can be adjusted, it can be made fatter, or it can be made it a bit longer. But be aware, if it is longer or fatter, you need to up the amount of fabric you need, size-wise, and you also maybe need to have a longer zip. Okay, so I actually trace mine off most of the time into a little bit of cardboard. You could use template plastic or even a piece of paper, and I write all my instructions on there. Okay, and actually what it is, because that's useful when you pick up this shape and you don't know what it is. Okay, so you've got your three layers together like so, and I'll move on to the next step. The next step is to lay this pattern onto your, your sandwich of um, fabric and wadding and stitch around it. Now, you can do that on the sewing machine or you can do it by hand. It doesn't matter. This is just a stitch to hold the layers together. Okay, then you're going to cut it out. So next step, cut it out. And then you will mark it halfway point on the long, on, on this side. It's like a melon shape and this side here. So how you do that is you fold it in half, mark, mark, fold it in half, mark, mark. You may prefer to put a pin in. I like to actually put little drawing marks on because uh, you won't be able to see them when the bag is finished anyway. Okay, the next step is we talk about um, bias cut fabric. Now you can see how this fabric sits along this edge and it curves on this edge with no problems at all. And this is because it's cut on the bias. So the bias is the stretchiest part of your fabric. So if you were to get a square of fabric or even a rectangle like this one is, the end of a roll, I fold it on the diagonal, so it's a two square sides, but this side here is the very stretchy part of the fabric. So if I go like this, you can see how stretchy it is. So if you're not familiar with using bias um, at all before, if, or if you are one of a uh, first side, this is a really good learning curve for using bias fabric. It is your friend. It can be a challenge, but you make it your friend. You use it to its abilities, and that's the best thing about bias, I can say. Now, these will be cut. This will be cut in two or two and a half inch strips. This is about two and a half. Two is okay as well, and pinned along the two long sides of your bag. 
Okay, you don't need to go around these short ends because they're going to be sewn up in a different, slightly different way, as we'll see when we get to that point. So that means you don't have to try and stretch it around that really um, abrupt curve or very sharp curve there. Okay, so two pieces pinned. So the heads are in and the points are here. And by doing that, you're able to stitch without taking those pins out. And even on the machine, you could do it that way as well without taking those pins out. And you get a really good uh, uh, flowing seam. So I would have cut those pieces, half them, and match that little point. Remember that little point that I penciled in? I would have matched them up so they're approximately sitting parallel or opposite each other evenly. Okay, like that. So after you've sewn that on, and it looks like this, then you're going to then wrap this over your seam allowance like so and you end you end up with what we call binding on an edge now this seam allowance here as you can see i've done it by a sewing machine should be at least quarter inch i use the edge of my foot which is a banana foot and it gives me just the right amount for what i'm used to okay not too fat not too thin and a word about this fabric this fabric has a one-way design, so be also very careful. These are not big pieces of fabric, but be careful of how you're, you're positioning your pattern um, in the, from the beginning because it is a, no, um, a one-way design. I actually split my uh, fabric in half uh, and made sure I added the seam allowance in so it's still the same size, as you can see, and seamed it together and pressed it open so when my bag is a bag it will the direction will be the same okay we'll have the, the curves going the same way if you don't do that you will have the curves going the other way on one side and you might be okay with that but i like a bit of consistency and a bit of evenness in this regard okay once you've turned this over you can see it's very stretchy and the other good thing about bias it doesn't tend to fray it tends to just fluff not that it matters with what we're doing um, but in a way it sort of does because um, what happens is when this is going to be cut you don't have to be worried about any fraying along this long edge uh, so you don't have to neaten it okay it stays as you see it right I'm putting a few pins in and I would then put in the pins inside those to match it up. Looking at this side, make sure it's a nicely rounded binding, uh, which it is. Okay, let's move on to the next step. The next step is to stitch this binding down. Now I stitch it in the ditch, which is just below the binding here along both edge with a double of um, thread as you can see here a double um, thread in your needle and you can see it quite well on here and every fourth stitch I do a back stitch okay so it's coming through the binding it's gone through all those layers and coming through the binding and it's just a little running stitch and you can you can hardly see it um, because I I um, matched the thread to this fabric okay then we're going to trim this off to about halfway off of there and it will look like this okay this one and this one have been trimmed now this one i've used white thread and you can really see it through the binding this one it's a darker thread because the aim of it is to match the thread to the, the main fabric, which you can see here. Just move that out of the way, like you have here. So you can see this very clearly here. Again, this is this this fabric, this bias fabric is just trimmed back and it doesn't fray. Your zip is going to sit over that 
and it, it will also be concealed by the zip. Okay. Right. Next step is to get a zip. Now we use metal teeth zips in these bags. If you always give them a little run through like that, and that loosens up the teeth, gets them nice and smooth, the action um, moving nice and smoothly. And we can use a seven inch or an eight inch zip in these bags. Either will work. And when I put, you put them on, they look too short. And that's okay, because they're not. Because we need to uh, seam up a little bit on the end here so the bag has the ability to hold things. If it goes right to the end, uh, it your things will fall out when you unzip. Okay. So I have the zip and I put a pin in it. In this case, uh, I wouldn't mark it on the zip because, um, especially a white zip, because you'd be able to see it. And that wouldn't be very nice. Okay. And then I have the melon shape of the bag here and put a pin in there because I can't see my mark now. It's underneath the bi the binding. And I might as well do the other one while I'm here too. Like so. And then we will talk about now zipper tape. So if you're familiar with zips or you've been using them for dressmaking for a long time, you may be aware that the, how a zip is made is interesting. It's like a herringbone pattern in, to, in the zipper tape, which is, this is the zipper tape here. And you can see little lines in it and they, it goes one direction and another direction. Now those lines look nice and they're, so the tape is strong, but they're also there for another reason. They're a reason to sew on because they are a straight line. So if you're aware of that, you can always sew your zip in straight. Whether you sew it in by machine or by hand, it will always be sewn in straight. So you can see it here running along there. And there are two, several lines. There's one, two, three. So the, you could, and the edge, but you wouldn't be sewing on the edge. One, two, three. And they are almost like recommended, as I said, recommended lines to stitch on and you get a very uh, evenly sewn in zip. Okay, the black one has it too, a bit harder to see. So I thought I'd show you on the white one. Okay, so I've now put a pin in my zip. I'll put a pin uh, halfway, like so. And now I'm going to put it into my bag. Right, we will put it in so it will be flipped up so the slider, this is the slider, is on the top. Okay, that's really important because you don't want the slider inside your bag. So firstly, we're going to just eyeball it, look at it and... Just be aware of where that slider is. I can't, I'm sort of emphasizing that bit because I know you just sew it in and you've put it in upside down. That would be disastrous. Okay, so I'm matching up these pins here and I'm going to then put a pin in there. Now, where do you put the zip as in regards to um, the teeth? This will be recessed into your bag, this zip when it's stitched on but you really do need to know where they're about to put it on along the binding so the binding is just over where the zip is and protects the zip after it's finished so i tend to look at putting the binding edge on where i can just see the teeth if you can see that i can just see the teeth and i will put in pins I'll put that one pin to hold it there, but I will then put in pins on this right side. This is the right side of the bag I've got a, a, in front of me. And I will put in pins curving the zip along and I can just see the edge of the teeth there. I'm curl, curling the zip around. Like so. 
curling the zip around and pin it. So I'm going to demonstrate on the white one. So I'm going to get this one. It's probably a bit dark to see. Just get that out of the way. Now you can use this one here. This zip here is more of a trouser zip, but it's a decorative one because it's got brass teeth. Now, um, as I said, zip, decorative zips have become quite a thing now. So uh, if you hunt around and you're looking for zips, I'm going to try and maybe have more zips in my shop in the future. I have to do a bit of research on that. And so keep a lookout in my shop. Okay, so we have it all pinned ready to go there. And we probably could take that pin out now. It doesn't need to be there. And the halfway point, I keep the halfway point on the zipper tape because that's going to match the other side, but I'll put that one there. Okay, needle and thread time. But as I said, you could sew this on the machine, but it starts to get trickier. Okay, this starts to get trickier to do this on the machine, and I prefer, even though I could do this part on the machine, I prefer to do this by hand. Okay, so we have a needle and thread, and doubled and a knot in the end. And now I'm going to sew this tape I'm going to bury that knot at the back. I'm going to sew this tape. And I'm going to look at where that is. Up the very top line of my tape. Okay, back stitch to start. Now this only needs to be stitched to the binding. You don't need to come out through the other side, but Obviously, you need to check every now and then that you are doing it to the binding and not coming out on the other side. So, again, what I do is every few stitches, I do a back stitch for insurance. And this should be fairly quick because this is not the only stitching that's going to be on here. Uh, so, you, you can be fairly quick don't do too big a stitch it's fine probably about um less than an eighth of an inch it's still quite small okay i can take some of the pins at the back out now loosen it off a little bit being aware of where the binding is on the showing through at the teeth and there's a few things happening here that you want to keep an eye on. You want to obviously make sure this is nice and even. I pull it fairly tight, if you know, so pull this thread pretty tight, put a back stitch in. And continue along and have a look what's happening. Yep, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. On the front side, obviously you won't rush it, be rushing. I'm not rushing, but I'm I'm uh, aware that you know you, you want to get to the next part of the construction. Okay, checking every now and then on the top. Okay. Okay, so you'll continue on that until you get to the end. Putting a back stitch in every now and then. And that pin can come out now. Now you might notice that 
the edge of this is fluting a little bit it's just waving a little but we're going to do something else to it um, it's the last one of the last things you can do and to make it really look very nice when you open it up okay nearly at the end Okay, right. Just be careful of the slider here, especially if it's a big slider like this one, that it's, it's going to be pushed down far enough to can sort of conceal it a little. It's a little always a little awkward around the slider. Okay, that's okay. Okay, now we're at the end. And do a locking off stitch there. A couple of stitches on top of each other and cut that off. Okay, now I've got a halfway point there on that side. So I just fold the zipper in half and put a pin there so I can match it up on the other side. So we're now going to undo the zip. Like That's a good testing point that everything is in where it should be. Brass zips that need a little bit more um, playing around with to get nice and smooth, I find. Okay, now we're going to tip this teeth over like so. Like that, and pin this first. Pin the center first and work your way out. Like so, making sure this is the even amount sticking out for both sides of your binding. So you might need to just adjust that a little. And slide it down. Looking at this side, I want it about the same. It's a bit funny if it wasn't. And curl it round. Okay. Then you're going to stitch exactly the same way, all the way along there. And then when you get to this point here, it becomes a little awkward because it's quite tight here. I tend to turn, push this through to the right side, through to the other way and do it that way. Okay, so that's there. Now I'll show you one that has been stitched all and it's completely stitched back in both sides now if I turn this through the other side you'll see what I mean so when you get to the point where it's a bit tight to stitch you're going to turn it through to this side to the wrong side so the right sides inside and then stitch this final bit here which is a little a bit tight okay All right now zip it up about halfway it's a little awkward to zip it inside. It doesn't usually want to do it. And we're going to now work on the ends. Okay, we're going to work on these ends here. Uh, but before we do that, it actually can be done, um, this next part, at the at first. It doesn't really matter if you do it this first or second. But what we do need to do is la just ladder stitch these bindings together over the end of the zip the end of the zip here and the start of the zip here and that gives you that area of your bag as you can see here that is makes a little bag so you can actually put things in there that's important so how 
just pin it together push that tape out of the way just pin it together here and ladder stitch so ladder stitch is like or mattress stitch, stitch is its other name is just going from side to side so i'll get my black thread and show you how to do mattress stitch okay so feed your needle inside the binding double thread again i like my double thread and from side to side you're going to catch the fold yep like that and then on that side this is especially good for joining toys if you've stuffed a toy or a ball or something like that and you want to not see where your join is after you've done your stuffing a, a good mattress stitch can be almost done in any color see where the join is so you can see back and forward from side to side like so until you get past the zipper end this is the point here the zip or zipper stop That hides it a bit because it's um, not an attractive thing, but it's essential, obviously, so your zip doesn't fall apart. But we like to conceal it too. Now, your teeth are completely inside this bag, so they're not in any danger now of doing anything. Take that pin out. Uh, to a sewing machine for the next part but i still do the next part by hand anyway okay so just um do a bar tack they call it this is uh, like two or three stitches on top of itself like so and that gives you like a little area of reinforcing of the end where this binding is stitched okay I do about three stitches you can see them there and then I feed my needle inside that binding there and then cut it off cut the thread off okay so you'll do that to the other end as well you'll sew that up to just after just before just on where the um, little uh, where you start to zip here just here just there and you can see then that stops there so I would turn this through to the wrong side now and then we're going to make our ends or finish our ends off so if I turn one of these through to the right side wrong side I should say you'll see what I mean okay okay this is what we're going to do to decorate the ends it also makes the bag be very square at and very strong at these points area these ends and so it actually sits will sit open and be very self-supporting i suppose you could say so at this point here you can stitch across here by hand or by machine you know we're near the teeth here so you're quite safe to do that but and I do this in two steps so first step is to sew through that end and then the first one you do it actually doesn't matter almost where it is because then you measure across where you've sewn and match it to the other side as you can see here and here so I'll sew this through I like to put, get the end of the teeth though, uh, or end of the zip, I should say, but it, that doesn't really even matter either. What is important is this this seam here runs right down the center of there, so you can fold it in half and make sure it is, or measure it if you like, um, or just in my case, I just 
guess this point. Uh, so it's just a big tacking stitch or well not big and I go across a couple of times for strength and obviously make sure you're straight that's quite important and then we're going to cut off that end and tidy it up now you could leave it like that but you know you probably don't want to do that I, I, I like to have nice clean tidy ends on this bag or on any bag actually so I tend okay so it looks like that and now I go back the other way go back and that's like really reinforced here yeah, can't come undone And across there and you will do this exactly the same to the other end as well as you can see on here okay so leave your needle and thread hanging and now cut that off right so okay so that's what you have Next step, you've probably got leftover binding from um, your initial um, cutting of your bias. And you're going to then make use of a piece. So cut off that end. And you're going to wrap this around that needle out of the way. In fact, what I do is work that down a little bit. So, just to, so it's just a little bit out of my way for this next step. So I'm going to wrap this around here, but you can see it's too wide to do that. And you can fold it over and do it. That's okay as well. Or you can use it single or cut it cut it a bit narrower. Uh, and it's important to pin this. So it's going to be wrapped around. Put a pin in there so I know how much. And then when you've wrapped one around, you can actually cut off the other one ready to go uh, if you like. Okay, so then I cut it. Now you could measure that as well. Get a tape measure and wrap it around it and measure it. But you know, I do things on the the moment, so I tend to use all different ways to measure things. And measuring a piece of fabric around like that does the trick for me. Okay, like that. And the next step is this then to stitch this on, working that needle back into where it should be then I'm going to stitch this end on and it doesn't have to go through all through all the layers it could be just a surface stitch so on that we are remember this this holds the ends together but this part is purely kneading, knitting and decorating the the little short ends of your fabric of your bag inside. Okay, line that up so it's a bit more square. And go across and meet. At the other side to you just swivel that around a little bit so it's a bit straighter and if your needle and thread is still long enough you can keep it attached for the next step Okay, so that's sewn to the end of there. Now flip this up like so. Bring your needle out to the front of your work. And then you're going to fold that over. Okay, every time I do this, it ends up different widths but 
it doesn't really matter as long as it's tidy in those ends. So flip that over. Like so, put a pin in. And then stitch that down on this side, which is the underside of your bag. It's the bottom. This is the bottom of your bag. So just yeah. this be right if I get grabbed. So grab hold of this edge. And then just and then this gives you a really, really firm end. Okay, so you're almost finished. So now we're going to talk about what happens to hold that zipper tape edge down. And it also camouflages your stitching a little bit because you're not looking at your stitching. You're looking at the decoration. Okay, so this is just over and over, finishing this part. So the stitch we're going to use is called herringbone. And I believe now, sometimes they call it long-legged cross-stitch, which I think is quite interesting. Um, um, because, yeah, like changes of names is interesting. But I've always known it as herringbone. It's a very um, good stitch to have in your arsenal of stitches. And um, for lots of different reasons, decoration, um, it's a very, it's actually a, a, a utilitarian type stitch for joining fabrics together. So it's actually a really good, good one to know how to do. Okay, so I'm just sewing off the edge here. I know I probably could be a lot tidier and I usually am, <laughs> but I'm conscious of time. All right, so feed that needle in. So the herringbone is done with a uh, sashiko thread. And the reason why I do do it in sashiko thread is it's it's easy to stitch with, number one. And number two, it's, um, I'll just thread up a colour that's good for this one. It's easy to stitch with and it's, it's matte. Uh, but you could use pearl thread also. Um, it's there's no no rules of the color of thread you know to do this too so you might want a, a nice um real uh yeah that one will be fine contrast or you might want it blending in it's completely your choice in that, that regard so i'll pull out one of these and my sashiko thread there we go and i'm using um a, quite, a sashiko needle, uh, which is a uh, quite a substantial needle. It's quite strong and uh, has quite a large eye, so it's easy to thread. So thread that. So you'll have to just imagine that the end of the bag is complete. Now, don't zip this all the way up, okay, inside, because if you do, you won't be able to unzip it. You won't be able to get to it to unzip it, so it's not a really good idea. So, turning this through to the right side, so the right side's out, and you can then check your end is nice and neat as well. And sometimes I use a pointy stylus to help me do that so pointing this through and you'll have a nice little square end now there we go makes life a little easier here we are so point that out and zip and push that out nice and you sew the binding up is right in the middle and then that um, little area that you ended off got 
is pushed right into the center and you wouldn't even through to the end of the zip and you won't even know it's there so we just turn that little end through so we can see it so you've got it's sort of right side out uh, and you can see the zipper tape All right put a knot in your sachet coat thread and it is like a, a, a cross stitch in a way but this like a few stitches is stitched quite rapidly so you're moving along and you can then mold the shape of the zipper tape and get it to sit nicely now you can sew off the edge of the zipper tape or you can sew on the zipper tape i like to sew off the edge and it's always going from right to left back on itself and you you have to be very careful to not bring it through to the right side of your bag so you're only actually going on the surface and on the lining here so it's back 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 and as I said this is holding your zipper tape down and being decorative all at the same time so when you're looking open up your bag you've got this little stitching area that is a bit of a surprise but we do want to check every now and then that we are not going through to the right side because you don't want that yep it's all good all good And you can do this before you even do that other end if you want to because it's easier then to get into it doesn't really matter i'm also using those got remember those guidelines and the zipper tape i was telling you about because there is a guideline just there and i'm using that as a a top point and then coming off onto the fabric so just using that as my reference point at the top there and then I'm shaping. Remember, you're uh, you're sewing a zip to a curved edge, so you're gonna think about that all the time. So wrapping it around your fingers makes it feel a little bit more insurance, more curve effect. Now, as soon as I do a little bit more, I'll take my fingers away so you can have a look. But this one and other ones now this stitch can be quite done quite small or or it can be just on the very edge of his zipper tape so you should be able to do one of these in easily in an afternoon uh, I've been going about 45 minutes and I've nearly completed the, this one but I mean I did put I have a bit in advance done but as we know handwork always takes time and if it's worth doing do it well okay so I'm not going to go right to the end because it's just repeating Okay, so that's what it will look like when it's done. And I suppose you could call it long legged cross stitch, um, but originally it was called herringbone. Okay, so you can see that it puts, it melds the edge of the zipper tape to the bag, makes it really not nice and tidy, and nothing will get caught on it. So you can see by this one, this one's a bigger stitch. And let's have a look what this one looks like. Uh, it's about the same size and uh, as you said I um, do them in different colors this one's a tiny pink one okay so it's completely up to you um, what color you use what thread you use when you do this how decorative it is uh, it just gives you another feature to your bag okay so what's next what is to finish this bag is to do the other end exactly the same as this end here and then you can zip up your bag 
um, then do your her herringbone. Zip up your bag and you've got a bag that you can use. Um, put in little your um, pencils and pens or the short rulers, um, anything like that. So recapping, we have gone through uh, application of a, of a metal zip, uh, how to handle bias fabric in strips, in, the, in binding, and, um, and construction of a bag, which is a very useful thing. If you have any questions or inquiries, don't uh, hesitate to con contact me on bittenbythebug.com. Uh, and I'll see you next time with another tutorial on something else or a technique uh, that I would like to show you. I hope you got some use and some enjoyment from today's uh, uh, lesson. Thank you. Bye.